ever woke up and wanted to have a very white voice until you got one? <laughs> oh, goodness. <clears throat> Means y'all gonna have to listen extra, extra careful today. Um, it's good to be here, man. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord at the park? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hey, if we haven't met, you're visiting with us today. Uh, my name's Mac. I have the privilege of, of serving on the staff here at Parkwood, or if you're watching us online for the first time, uh, pleased to meet you. Um, at the end of the service, we, it's really important to us that you're here and like to connect with you a little bit, so we'll have a time for that as well. But um, today, uh, we are wrapping up this series, Conflict, and uh, I hope it has been um, as instructional and as good as it possibly can be for you um, the way it has been for me. So one of the things that I always pray when I'm going through a series is, God, let me live this out, right? I'm, I mean, when I'm preaching, I want to not only preach from the word, but have the heart stories. And uh, there's been a lot of it in this series. God's dealt with me, um, and he's shown me even in uh, – as I'm in the middle of, of, of teaching this learned behavior, he is teaching me as well. So I want you to know that, that what you hear um, is not just from a, a voice, but it's from also a voice that's going through some of the same things. Um, we're going we're gonna to push through this really fast today, write down. Everybody have your little sheets? Hold your sheets up for me. It's important that you have your sheet today. This is the final sheet that you're going to take home with you. Well, we're going to push through a little bit real quick. I want to talk about authority. Then we're going to do a recap. And then at the end, I'm going to ask Pastor Manny to come up and we're going to do a, a Q&A time. There's been some questions that have been sent in and uh, I, want to, I want to respond to those. So, um, All right, so this is my iPhone and I went not too long ago to, the, uh, to my uh, carrier, T-Mobile, to say, Let's, can we, I, I want to get a new phone. And uh, they said, okay, that's great. Do you want to... Um, us to pull over all the data, right? That's your, your pictures, your contact information. And about five years ago, I said yes to that. And it was like, I was there for three hours. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, it's like ridiculous. And so I, uh, because I have the ability to do it, I, I know how to do it. And I'm going to keep my old phone. I just said, no, no, I'll, I'll just take it home and do it myself. And so I did it pretty quickly. Three days later, um, I, I, Three days later, um, I, I can get everything copied over. But then there's this one final step. It asks me, it says, um, enter your iCloud or your Apple ID. Right? <laughs> okay. The ones that are laughing notes are like, what was that? You know? And uh, what it was telling me was um, I had the ability to do this, right? I knew what to do. I had the ability to do it. But now it's asking that last step was, do I have the authority? Do I have the authority to change this phone? Um, and maybe that's not a great example. Maybe, uh, let, me, let me give you a couple other examples. Like you're driving down the road and you see somebody speeding, right? You have the ability to, to pull them over, correct? But unless you're a police officer, you don't have the authority to do that. Maybe one that hits even closer to home a little bit. Uh, let's just say you're uh, at uh, Chick-fil-A. You're eating your spicy chicken sandwich, and things get real spicy around you because there's these kids running all around, bumping you, doing cartwheels. They're not your kids, but you want to treat them like they're your kids, right? So, you know, you're like, I, I could parent these kids and, 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 and tell them a thing or two, show them a thing or two, or even maybe backhand them a time or two. Can we say that anymore? Uh, no, we can't. Okay, I take the, retract that last one. But you may have the ability to know how to do it, but because they're not your children, you don't have the authority to do that. And we've been talking the last three weeks about this conflict, you know, the explosions moving through the, uh, the, uh, the hurt and, and being balanced. And what hopefully you've gotten from that is there are tools and, and things that we've given you that you know now I have the ability to uh, be a peacemaker, right? But do I have the authority? Do you have the authority to bring about peace? And for me, a win for me today is for that, that you would walk out these doors here and you would realize, listen, I have been trained. This is a learned behavior. I get it. I'm not good at this. I, sometimes I, I, I'm not comfortable in this area, but I know how. I am now equipped to handle conflict the way that the Bible has laid it out for us, and I have the authority to act on it. That would be 
a, a win for me today. So your handout that you've got, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of push through this. Um, this is something that I want you to take home. I want you to um, put a magnet on it, stick it on your refrigerator, wherever you can find it. Because here's the deal. You're gonna come up with, uh, uh, you're gonna come into conflict probably sooner rather than later. And everything that we've given you here, the scriptures, the, the, the bullet points with some talking points, it's like the cheat sheet, if you will, for how to resolve conflict. And looking at that real quick, just go ahead and look at your sheet. We see that, that first part before the explosion, this idea of we have the ability, our perspectives, we have the ability to see conflict as an opportunity, right? It is an opportunity for us. The, the verses here are straight from the Bible and the mindset should be, listen, man, I wanna own my part. I wanna own 100% of my part. If I'm in a conflict and if you are a part of a conflict, then you have to own a part in the conflict. And if it's 2%, 5%, whatever it is, we want to own 100% of our part of it. Make sense? I need you to say, yeah. Oh, you guys are awesome. Okay. What's the next thing we want to do? There's another thing we want. When someone has hurt me, uh, the first thing that I want to do is, is, is I want to start with me. I like, is, is there anything that I did, you know, look inward first. Is there something that I did that might've brought this about? Um, and, 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 and here's, here's what I've done wrong. And then the last thing with all that is in dealing with this conflict, we, we want to remember that it's pressing, right? This is not something that we just throw in the back burner and say, hey, you know, I'll give them some space. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We want to diligently resolve conflict as, quick, as quickly as possible. And if you're, if you're not doing that, then it could be a symptom that you were one of two things that we, we spoke about, right? Either a, a peace faker or a peace breaker, right? A peace faker, remember that's somebody that under all circumstances, they just, they, they avoid conflict. They run from it. They don't want to face it. They get quiet. They just shut down, right? And then there's the, the peace breaker, which is almost like the teeth breaker, right? You want to be aggressive. You're seeking revenge. You're seeking like a, um, uh, you, you want there to be a price paid for what the other person's done. Um, if you're either one of those, if you fall into either one of those categories, uh, that, those, those are wrong behaviors. Here's what I do know. I know that forgiveness, forgiveness in and of itself is part of what it means to be a follower of God. Forgiveness is what it means to be Christ-like. Um, and, and here's another one. Um, can you overlook a small offense? We talked a little bit about that. If you can overlook it, that's great. That's what you, that's what you have to do. You, just care, you, you clearly can express your hurt. You, you say, hey, you've hurt me by doing this. You hurt me when you said this. That's okay to say that, right? And, and, and then if, if the, the, the problem is not resolved, we, we've learned that you had to widen the circle, right? And, and, and if it gets to the point where we have to bring it in front of the church, have the church ask the church for help, we can do that. But we wanna be diligent in resolving conflict. Make sense? All right, got a couple of you saying yeah. All right, um, here's the deal with all this stuff. It's, it's really, it really isn't a problem of us not knowing what to do, is it? It's really that in a lot of ways, it falls into one, two, two categories. We're either not at a point where we want to do that or we're scared. We're scared people. And that first one and the second one falls under this idea that we're a slave to the approval of others. Even, even the people that we're in conflict with. I believe this is important. Um, I believe that we have to know that we have the authority. And I wanna, I wanna show you that today. Um, like, like for instance, though, if your marriage is in a bind and you, you wanna go to a marriage counselor, right? You're, you're, you're thinking, hey, I'm investing my time in a person that I believe has the ability and the authority to bring restoration to draw me and my spouse closer together. We, we do that, we believe that. And what I wanna show you today in the scriptures here is that you do have the, not only the ability, but you have the authority. Christians have that ability and authority in all situations of unrest and when there's conflict to bring about peace, restoration, and unity. And it starts with the conflicts, uh, church, that you're in, the ones that you're in. 
But let me explain this idea of authority to you real quick. Uh, it starts appropriately where I think it should start at the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God had created the heavens and the earth. We all know that, right? Everybody knows Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But let me ask you this. What was wrong? What, what was wrong with his creation? Right, and, and, and I, I, I gotta be careful because when you say that, it almost sounds blasphemous, except we see in verse two, it explains all this, right? It highlights it. It says this, now the earth was blank and blank. Darkness was over, it doesn't say that. That's just what I put up there. Um, darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What do you think those are? It was formless and empty. Let me read it again. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Formless and empty. Some translations may say void, but I want you to remember those words, formless and empty. That's extremely important. Uh, and this was the problem that God is now beginning to solve, right? He, he creates this and God, when I say God, I'm talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, Right they're, they're starting to form and fill the earth. We see that it, it goes on to say, um, uh, let there be light, and there was light, right? God's, God's forming, right? Then we get the, the vegetation, the seed-bearing plants, the trees, God's, God's forming. And then he begins to, after all the forming, he begins to fill. We see that if we move on in verses 11 and 12, it says that uh, he's filling the earth with his creation. He's forming, uh, putting, in, in verse 20, he's filling the, the seas with fish, birds and animals, and he says to them what? He says, be fruitful and increase in number or multiply. So we see what's going on, man. He's been doing all this forming and now he's filling and he's making the land creatures. Then in verse 26, this is very important. He says, let us, remember that's the Trinity. Let us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us make mankind in our image, in our our likeness, so that they may, what? What? Um, he's saying something really important here. And to me, this is foundation in, in, in a, to a biblical worldview of understanding this right here. He's saying, so that they may rule. So that they may rule. So he, he made mankind in his own image, so that, and it says, that they rule over the fish of the seas and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all creatures that move along the ground. What this tells me, and it should tell you, church, is that being made in the, in the image of God has tremendous implications for us. Being made in the image of God, in the likeness of God, has a huge impact on us. One of them is our God given responsibility and authority to rule. It's, it's kind of like God took the relay baton of, of responsibility. He said, here you go. Okay, I've created it. I formed it. I filled it. Now I'm passing it on to you, which you were made in my image, image meaning I'm giving you the responsibility to, to move forward and to form and to fill. And, and he's given us all this authority. And then what happens, right? What happens? God makes mankind, mankind drops the ball. Because of that, forming and filling become much more difficult, right? We, we see that with the, the, the wife and, 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 or the mother and, and during child labor and what he says about man and his work, his, the way he'll have to work. We made it harder, we dropped the ball. But we still, even though we drop the ball, we still have the responsibility of authority to rule on this earth. The text that, um, that we've been, that's been central really to all this teaching that we've gone through over the last three weeks is Matthew chapter 18. Excuse me. Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17 really is what they call the, this is the how do you handle conflict in the church scripture. There's, there's, there's some of them, other ones out there, but this is the main one. 
15 through 17. You're familiar with it. We've read it a bunch of times. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. If not, take somebody with you. And they, if they've listened, you've won them over. Then it says this, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So what we're hearing right now, this, this scripture right here is the authority. It's the authority of Jesus saying, look, as my followers, as, as, as children of God, um, you are, and you have the ability to bring peace to all situations. This is, this is what he's saying. This is what I want you to do. This is one of the messages that, that, that he preached. You know, you heard me say this before that he only had so much time when he was here. And this was important to him. This was foundational to him to lay this out for us, to, to give us the, the, the step-by-step, play-by-play directions on how we deal with conflict in the church. He gave us really a, a ministry of reconciliation and central to what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ is, is, is to pick up the parts. I, I, I'm Corinthians 5.19, I, I think I have that up there. Corinthians 5.19 says this, listen to this, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he was committed to us and, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So as a Christian, are you guys still with me? You, you track with me? As a, I know I'm blazing through a lot of this stuff, but the big picture theme that I'm trying to, to get across today is that you have the authority to bring order. And, and, and from that order comes a responsibility to make peace as children of God. Very, very important. The problem is that many times in the church, Christians are the number one offender of a cynical heart. Christians are the, the number one offender of a critical spirit. We're often, actually we're more often than not, we are the offenders of gossip. Mm. We're, the, uh, we're the offenders of, well, you know what, let me, let me just vent. Let me just tell you what happened, what this person did, right? And what's happening when we do that is we're not living out our purpose. We're not living out what God has already said, that we have the authority and the ability to bring about peace and reconciliation. We are going against the grain. We are now opposing God's calling on our lives. Slippery slope. We are to bring peace to our homes. We're to bring peace to our neighborhoods, to relationships. Our number one goal is getting people back to Christ. Getting back to Christ. They're his children. I don't know where you're at in your journey of Christianity. I don't know. I mean, we're all in, in different places. But I know that it's easy to walk through those doors, come in here, and really try to put on this facade that, you know what? Everything's good. I'm okay. Me and my bro here, we're, we're getting along. And then as soon as we exit these doors, we go back to talking about somebody or hit the whole social media, whatever, whatever digital method you want to use. Then all of a sudden what's happened is years have gone by and, and, and one day we could possibly look back on our lives and say, man, I'm 70 years old. And I think I totally missed my purpose. I don't, I don't know that I ever brought peace to a situation like, like I could have. Don't be that person. It's never too late to change. The hardest verse in the Bible is how we talk about love our neighbors, love our enemies, right? What seems like an impossible and daunting task, God's laid out 
a foundation for us to use so that we can achieve that. You know, I shared, um, <clears throat> I shared with you several times this idea about um, the gentleman, I don't even know his name, but the gentleman that set fire to our church. I don't know about you, um, but I took that very personal. And then the, the, the aftermath of that, right? Not just the, the, uh, the, the bitterness and the anger and the, and the wanting revenge, right? Uh, all of this stuff. Not only that, I see my pastor who I love dearly is now being thrown into an area that he shouldn't even have to be dealing with for, for two years almost, that he's trying to figure out codes and how the doors shut, right? And, 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 and that's, listen, that's taken away time from pastoring and from preaching and from loving on people. So there's a lot of layers into this onion that I'm, I, I'm, I'm sharing with you because um, at some point in time, I had to say, okay, listen, you've heard me say this part, that he has a soul and it matters to God just, just as much as my soul. But I know that he went and he got caught and he went to jail, not for all of it, but for some of it. He paid his debt. And so... If I were to see him today, my heart is totally different. You know, and, and I have, I've forgiven him for if, I don't know, the transgression, whatever the word is that you want, biblical word, or just for the stuff that he did to this church, to my church family. I've forgiven him. Does that mean I forget? Well, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later on. But um, it's never too late to change your heart. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna ask Pastor Manny, would you come up? Church, I don't know if you realize how blessed you are to have this man as your leader. I am, uh, I'm 15 years at least his elder. And I hear, come sit over here. If I, if I got to sit, and you notice how your seat's shorter than mine, so I won't look like I'm a midget? I see that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, the seats aren't going to help that. No. <laughs> okay. So how are we going to deal with conflict? How are we going to deal with conflict? Here we go. <laughs> um, and I appreciate that. I mean, I, the, the walk-up was really good. When you walk up to someone clapping, yeah, yeah. it feels really good. Yeah, that's I didn't know if it was going to be like the Eagles song, kick them all the up, kick them all the down. Yeah, no, no. No, I, I want to say, though, that um, continue what I was saying is that um, even though I'm uh, 15 years as elder, it's like every day you're teaching me something. And um, that's what I love about you is that, um, and listen to this. We teach each other. I mean, that's, that's the truth. Is this mic on? Testing. One, two. There it is, yeah. Testing. Sibylla. Here's what I... <laughs> Which, what word do you use? I don't know. Okay. Um, so there's this, this idea that, you know, uh, your pastors always get along. And we're like, buddy, buddy, right? Well, we are buddy, buddy all the time. But we have disagreements. And, uh, you know, there's been times I think that I can say with both of us where we feel like we failed the other one. Yeah. I remember a time, and I share this because I want you to understand the, the, how real this is. There was a time when... Um, I can't even remember the actual thing going on. I think we were doing some cleaning after the fire and I was with something. And uh, the next day he like calls me in, into my, uh, at his office. He goes, hey, listen, I want to apologize. And I'm like totally, I'm blind, right? Because I didn't take it as it. He goes, will you please forgive me for, for any, whatever it was. And I'm like, awkward. But I'm like, I don't even remember the offense, but yes. So if you remember in, in this study that we've been doing, I, I told you that that is the way that we reconcile is we don't say, hey, listen, man, I'm sorry, right? The person that knows how you offended him, he already knows you're a sorry person, right? And we don't say, hey, um, forgive me, right? That's command. But the idea of saying, will you, it's now asking a question. That, that first word, will, can change everything. And when he said that, um, that's actually where I got Got that part of my my message. So it's a little bit plagiarized, Sorry. but from you. But um, I didn't write a book yet. But so. uh, but so then I have offended him. Uh, it wasn't all that long ago. 
Uh, no, I mean, it's one of those times. Yeah. Well, it was a, it was a catastrophe. It was a catastrophe. Yeah. And, uh, but it's okay. We and, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. We did. And I said, and I said to him, Hey man, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And, uh, that's the beautiful thing about understanding how this um, God-given ability and authority works is that, is that and I, I feel like that brings us even closer together. I mean, I, I do. I think of him as a brother, and that's enough compliments on him for one day. Yeah, I, I think, though, as you're saying that, I appreciate that. Just one clap. That's good. Uh, uh, one person loves you. Well, they're the one who really knows me. Yeah. So, so I, I think one of the things that... Um, it's hard for me to remember all the time, but when I force myself to remember it, I'm the chief of all sinners. Yeah. And I think we have a hard time with that, especially when we've been offended. When we've been offended or we've been hurt, we forget that we're the chief of all sinners. And I say that not lightly. I think that's real. I don't always remember my sin, but when I'm confronted with my sin, I realize that I'm a sinner. We got any sinners in the house? Yeah. Don't forget that you're a sinner. And if you forget, we're going to tell you. Because that's what the church is supposed to do. The church is supposed to remind each other that we are imperfect. Because it forces us to be reminded why Jesus Christ died. Yeah. And conflict is a great representation of that. And you've done a really good job over the last few weeks of doing that. And I know that there are some questions here that people have sent in. And we're not going to be able to tackle all of them. But right. we want to talk, tackle. Yeah. Because these are questions that come from sinners. But they come from sinners who are bought with a price with Jesus' blood, and they want to be more like Jesus. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So the, the first one is— Well, before you say it— Okay, go ahead. I was just listening to you talk, and my voice the way it is. I feel like we're Barry White and Celine Dion. We yeah, can, more like Pee Wee Herman and Barry White. That's what— we might, we might at the end, we could sing a duet or something. We, we probably could not. All right. <laughs> so, All right. So, so, the, uh, so when you guys ask questions, I appreciate you guys sending these in. Some of y'all put them on Wednesday. Some of you text them. Some of these we made up because you took a long time sending in questions. Um, but uh, but the, when we're in conflict and someone doesn't have the same conflict style as me, what do we do? When, when we're not playing by the same rules, yes. how do we handle that? So uh, basically what you're saying is a non-believer, right? Because we've talked through this whole thing about um, as believers in Christ, how does the church handle conflict? But how do we handle conflict with somebody that's not a believer? It's a great question. And uh, the answer I would say to that is found really at the end of that scripture, right? Matthew 18, 15 through 17. You're really skipping those first two steps and you're going right to that um, that treat him as a pagan or a tax collector. What the Bible says a pagan is, is somebody that's, that doesn't know Christ, right? They're a sinner, right? And, and, and get this, a pagan should act like a pagan. We, we should be able to expect that. But the, our, our, first, our primary goal to somebody who's not a child of God is what? Share the gospel. Sharing the gospel in conflict, you, know, you can say, okay, listen, how, what have I done? How have I hurt him? How have I offended him? But our ultimate goal is to continually share the gospel. And that's, that's why I, I love what we say here, you know, love people to Christ as we go. So. so what about for people who don't have the same style as you, like a wife who needs a minute to take a break? Uh, it's question three on here. You need, a, oh, you need a minute to take a break and they want to go away, but you're a person who pursues conflict and you want to finish it quickly. How do you act like that when your wife is crazy? I didn't mean your wife or my wife. So the spouse, when the spouse is crazy. I'm just starting a conflict. Yeah. Um, well. Like they want to they back away. They yeah, want to yeah. in conflict and you want to pursue. Right. How do you handle that? Well, and that's, you know, that's kind of like we're saying is that, uh, and, and not a negative connotation at all, but maybe you're, maybe this person's wife is a, is a person that gets quiet maybe when they, um, when they're in conflict and that's a natural response, right? And, uh, and, and maybe they don't want to say anything or they want to, uh, wait for cooler heads to prevail. Um, my wife's not like that. Um, which I like about it is she's very clear. I know when we're in conflict because most of my, uh, um, cabinets in the kitchen get slammed. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, yeah. whatever I'm doing, I stop. And that's just the way that I know it's her love language. That's, that's, that's like, don't beat him. Beat great these and he knows. I that's a great it. love yeah, language. Yeah. But so this idea of space, the only problem I have with it is I can't find anywhere in the scripture where it says that we're to wait. I, I yeah. don't see anything in the, in the scripture where it says, 
uh, okay, you know what, let's hold off because, you know, uh, time will heal all wounds. Um, I, I think we have to look at, and we see this in Matthew 5, Matthew 7, Matthew um, 18, uh, in Ephesians 4, I, I think I think that if there's a problem and your and your spouse says I need some time, okay, I, I get it. Maybe maybe you can maybe you have to sleep on it, right? Maybe cooler heads will prevail in the morning. But what you need to do is you need to set a time where you can go back. Set a time, okay? So tomorrow morning I'll meet you nine o'clock at Starbucks or wherever your safe place is, right? Let's go there and let's continue to work towards unity. Even saying that, just hey, our, my goal that means that when when she pillows her head at night, she's going to know that. In my heart, what I'm saying is. The goal of this conversation, whether it's hard, whether it goes well or not, is for us to have unity. Yeah, so so what I hear you, hear you communicating is different personality types have to handle it differently, but if we're going to oh, follow through with the scriptures, what we need to do is we need to actually continue to pursue restoration, reconciliation. Even though we have to take a time out, we always come back to it. So, the, so it's not avoidance. Right. It's just kind of de-escalation. Yes, All yes, right. absolutely. Cool. All right, so uh, what else do we have there? The, the next question is um, uh, really has to do with, I forgot it since you were talking. Um, oh, can I go to counseling? I mean, I mean, we're, we're supposed to love the Bible. We need to trust the Bible. We need to follow yeah. all things. But what about counseling? What about coaching people to help me along this journey of solving problems yeah. and conflicts? Um, you know, you could probably answer that better than I, I could be with your, your, your background in counseling. Yeah, what, I, what, what I would say is that, um, you know, I think marriage counseling is a great thing. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing. And it, it also, but it's important that you're, I feel it's important that you go to somebody that's biblically trained. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I, and also I think that another thing about uh, marriage counseling is that it's the, it's, it's a safe place in, it, in, in itself with a person because you're going to somebody that's neutral. Right. You know, you're not, Hey, he's on her side or he's on his side. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a healthy thing, but I think you could talk to that better than I could. Yeah. A non-emotional presence is always the best one to help de-escalate and help you work through things. Also, people that don't have any skin in the game, yeah. you need them to tell you the truth sometimes. And yeah. so uh, I think it's good. I think you do. If you're going to see a counselor, you're going to see a coach, you're going to see somebody walk you through stuff, having someone who is biblically informed and have a biblical basis is, for a Christian, is most important yeah. um, because we don't want to be railroaded into, you know, going down a track of believing some things about even counseling restoration that would not be connected to God's word. So, yeah. It's good. We, yeah, the way we say it here is that um, we are uh, clinical counselors from a Christian perspective. Yeah. So that's what we do. Because we want that as our backbone and our filter, even for people that aren't counselors, I mean, or aren't Christian, they need to be able to, to still get some help. Yeah, it's good. I think that also ties into the whole body, mind, spirit. It's a whole, right? whole thing. What's another question? Well, this is, this is one from our teenagers. Okay. All right. I've been ghosted. What do I do? <laughs> I've been ghosted, Pastor Mac, okay. like Casper. Yeah. All right, well, so... Like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Excuse me. So for everybody over 35, ghosting means that they're not replying to your emails, texts. Nobody, well, nobody re reads emails anymore. Text, TikTok, yeah. whatever it is that you do, Instagram, right? We'll just say that they're giving you the silent treatment for the people over 35. Right, hand to the face. Right, hand to the face. Not, that wasn't a high five. Oh, oh, that I thought you were high five me for coming up with that. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, that's a hard thing, right? Because basically you're getting the cold shoulder. Yeah, cold shoulder. That's a 1950s term. It's good. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's relevant. Derek, what would I say? Is there a cool it's term? Ghosting. Ghosting. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, Derek doesn't know any cool term. Okay. We already determined yeah. that. <laughs> All right, so ghosting, if somebody is uh, not responding to my text, uh, that doesn't mean that I just, uh, I, I, I let it lie, right? Right. I continue to pursue. I continue to look at them. I continue, I continue to call them, to text them, say, hey, listen, have I offended you because I know that you're not returning any of my, my texts, right? So is there something that I've done uh, that I could correct so that we can, we, we can talk, mm -hmm. right? I think you have to continually pursue that. And that's not always easy because that takes a little bit of eating a humble pie. Right. Right, but here's what I would say. So many times, and let's let's just end with this one, okay? And because uh, I got a couple of words I want to say, and then we can move into a time of communion. Okay. Here's the thing about putting things off. A lot of times we've heard this saying that um, time will heal all wounds. Right? Have you heard that? But that's so far from the truth. And so what happens is time sometimes can take a wound, and it can you know it, it, it starts festering up. 
right? And then the next thing you know, there's gangrene that's set in, and then it sometimes it can go all the way to amputation, yeah. right? And, and, and I think what we can find is that sometimes time doesn't heal, but it hurts more than it, than it, than it heals. So it's very important, like if you've got a problem with somebody, if you are in conflict with somebody, that you can't put it off. You can't bank on the fact that, uh, you know what, in a few weeks they'll, they'll feel better because chances are they're not. They're gonna, they're gonna be more angry that you haven't responded. One of the, the um, um, I think the thing that I say, one of the number one things that would cause disunity is for somebody to say, I'll get back with you, right? That's a cold shoulder. So as hard as it is and as scared as we are and, and as much as we want to seek approvals of others, we have to fall all the way down, be balanced by falling all the way down into humility and saying, hey, listen, what have I done? How can I help? Starting with yourself. It's good. So here's, here's what I like to say is, this is it. This, this is your answer. These, the, your answers are here. This is a, it's a, uh, like I said, it's a cheat sheet. And if you would, um, take it home with you. And next time you, you find yourself in conflict, um, You've got something to fall back on, some scriptures, some talking points. And uh, I'm gonna, if it's okay, I'll just close this portion out in prayer and then you can lead us into a time of communion. So and the band can go ahead and, and come on up. Heavenly Father, I just, uh, I thank you for uh, teaching me through the course of this month uh, about conflict and how, how difficult it can be. Father, how hard it is even as a Christian, as, a, as we were made in your image, Father, and I, I think about the fact of your unconditional love and what that meant that you sent your son for all of our transgressions, for all of the things that we've done, all the hurt that we've caused, all the sin in our lives, Father, that you sent your son to redeem us, to, to bring us back to you. Father, so I pray that as we, as we leave this place, Father, and that we, we walk through these doors into our mission field, Father, I pray that we are not a church that's inauthentic. Father, that, that is a sign of evil to me, and I use that word strongly, but an inauthentic church that just comes in here and does their thing on Sunday and then walks through the doors and they're different on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Father, I pray, I pray that we will be consistent. Uh, Father, that we will always pursue you in your ways because your ways are higher than our ways. So in your gracious name that we pray, amen.